For the first minute, let's sit with a historical truth that rarely gets mentioned outside academic corners. The Vikings didn't just survive the Arctic. They mastered it so completely that later settlers, especially those moving north during the 18th and 19th centuries, were explicitly instructed not to adopt one of the Vikings' most effective home-building techniques. Missionaries, colonial administrators, and military surveyors all made note of it in their journals. This old Scandinavian method created homes that retained heat, resisted storms, concealed sound, and required almost no wood to maintain. It allowed isolated families to thrive with almost no external support. And in frontier regions where governments wanted newly settled populations dependent, visible, and easy to reach, this silent, self-sufficient Viking housing strategy was something authorities preferred to bury. The irony is that archaeologists have spent the last century proving how advanced this construction really was, while survival instructors rediscover it quietly because modern insulation still can't match it in certain conditions. Today you're going to hear exactly how it worked, why officials wanted it forgotten, and how you can use the same principles in any cold weather survival scenario. Now, let's look at what really set these homes apart. Understanding the Viking turf-sealed silence. The technique in question starts with the Viking mastery of turf sealing. While many people know Viking longhouses used turf, what's often overlooked is how deliberate the layering was. Builders used alternating sheets of cut sod and compacted soil packed into the outer walls, sometimes 40 to 60 centimetres thick. This wasn't just insulation, it was silence. Turf absorbs external wind sound and muffles internal noise down to a whisper. Arctic settlers later rediscovered that a thick turf skin around a dwelling made a home acoustically invisible during storms and nearly impossible to hear from more than a few metres away. This mattered to Viking families because wind noise drains body heat and destroys sleep cycles. A silent house is a warm house. But in later centuries, colonial officials did not want isolated farming communities disappearing into the landscape in self-contained turf homes. They wanted standardized frame houses that creaked, showed smoke, and could be inspected easily. For survivalists today, a practical application is building a double-layered wall system in an emergency shelter. A simple earth or sod layer outside a wooden shell dramatically improves warmth and quiet. If constructing a snow hut or dugout, pressing sod onto the outer surface stabilizes temperature and reduces sound loss, keeping the environment calm and heat efficient. Let's explain why the recessed floor design made these homes almost impossible to freeze. Another part of the ban technique was the recessed living floor. Viking homes weren't just partially underground. Many had interior floors dug even deeper, with the walking level set 30 to 60 centimetres below the entry threshold. This recessed layout trapped warm air at human height and pushed cold air into the corners, where it could be absorbed by the turf walls. Later, Arctic governments discouraged settlers from copying this because the technique made houses so energy efficient that families needed almost no imported fuel. Administrators wanted trade dependence, not independent turf-insulated heat traps that consumed only scraps of firewood. Practically, the recessed floor works because heated air naturally pools downward in a sealed environment, especially when the roof is low. To use this method yourself, you can build a shallow pit inside any emergency shelter. A simple dugout beneath a tarp roof traps heat far more effectively than a surface-level tent. 
Even modern off-grid cabins use a variation of this principle when they incorporate sunken hearth areas to keep heat contained. One of the cleverest ideas the Vikings used, something authorities really didn't want settlers reviving, was their unique ceiling system. Instead of those tall chimneys or wide smoke exits you might expect, Viking builders made use of a low, gently sloped roof, packed tightly with turf. This design let smoke diffuse slowly through several layers before finally escaping. The result? A cosy, warm microatmosphere right under the roof, where heated air would linger for hours on end. And crucially, there was almost no visible smoke plume, which made longhouses incredibly discreet. In the Arctic, where those in power wanted to track settlements from far away, low signature smoke was seen as a real problem. Interestingly, this same concept popped up again in Cold War snow shelters, which were designed specifically to reduce heat signatures. These days, you can actually use the same principle by building a shelter with a low roof line and a very small, controlled vent. Just a narrow vent above your stove or fire pit prevents heat from rushing out, and your roof, whether made of sod, snow, or even thick fabric, captures the warmth and honestly cuts down on fuel needs quite dramatically. Inside those old Viking homes, just about everything — platforms, beds, benches, even storage spaces — was made from heavy stuff like stone or thick-cut timber. These acted as thermal mass, soaking up heat during cooking or heating times, and then releasing it long after the fire had died down. Later on, settlers switched to lightweight imported furniture — which, well, didn't offer this benefit, and meant families had to burn more fuel just to keep warm. If you're looking to recreate that Viking approach today, you can build stone benches or thick wooden sleeping platforms near your heat source, letting those materials store radiant warmth. Even in a snow shelter, packing your bed platform with dense ice blocks or frozen earth can help stabilize the temperature. Now, the suppression of these techniques wasn't some big conspiracy, it was just practical. Governments wanted settlements to be uniform, taxable and regulated, with houses that looked like the standardised European models. Viking homes, sealed with turf, built with recessed floors and low smoke, didn't need fuel shipments, were tough to monitor, and made people less dependent on official supply routes. So. Officials pushed settlers to abandon these old methods for frame houses that needed constant upkeep and imported materials. Yet the old Viking homes actually outperformed most colonial designs when it came to heat, silence and storm resistance. If you're interested in sustainable shelter design, you can adapt Viking wisdom right away. Start by building into the earth, not above it. Add a turf or soil layer to your walls. Keep the roof low and dense. Create a recessed interior floor to trap heat. And, of course, use heavy materials inside so your home holds on to warmth all night. Even a small emergency shelter built this way will beat out a standard tent or cabin in cold weather. If you enjoy deep historical engineering, you can actually use, make sure to subscribe, share the video, and stay tuned here on In the Beginning for more forgotten techniques that, honestly, still outclass much of what we call modern design.